John, and thanks everyone for joining us today. As Ron said, this is a slightly different format. In the previous uh, 23 webinars, I have always had a guest that has come in and um, discussed a particular topic or just a little bit of uh, uh, witty banter back and forth between us. But I've had a lot of requests to cover uh, a bit on the topic of training and, and training options that are available. And so the month of February, we're focusing on the journey to an agile mindset, choosing your options. And I'm just going to go ahead and stop this share for a second here. Yeah. So one of the things that is absolutely the, the differentiator that we've covered in, in multiple episodes before from a, a discipline agile being a toolkit perspective and all the other you know, agile frameworks that are available in the industry is, is all about choosing your way of working. And that's one of the things that from a foundational training standpoint, when teams are getting going on adopting DA is based on their context, based on lots of attributes that they're getting ready to face, they go through the toolkit and make selections that are best fit for the type of work that they're doing. Well, when it comes to training, we don't see that as often. We, you know, there are lots of, of people that have reached out because they don't understand what training options they might have, what learning styles might be available to them. And there we go. That's the topic for today. And, and what I want to be able to share is how to move towards getting that mind shift to an agile way of working. And whether you're an individual that's looking to upskill yourself, looking to explore discipline agile or move, you know, potentially from uh, a role that you currently have all the way through the most experienced um, related certifications that are going to be available in the discipline agile space. So that's, that's the topic for today. And I, I have to say, I'm absolutely thrilled um, to, to cover this. Yeah. So Josh, before we get started, you sort of chose a different um, setup for today, which looks great. But uh, what are you drinking there? <laughs> uh, yeah, I did. Since I'm I'm in a uh, a chair that's normally off to the side behind uh, the desk that I've got here in my office. Um, I, yeah, I've actually got an espresso that I'm drinking. So if any of you are espresso drinkers, I could actually do probably a webinar series on on coffee and espresso. This happens to be a single origin. It's a Ethiopian Sadama. It's from a, uh, a coffee roaster in Redmond, Washington named Cafe Lusso. Uh, I ground this on a Weber Works EG1 and I pulled the shot of espresso off a La Marzocca Linea espresso machine. And um, it's, it's almost perfectly sweet. So yes, it's my fourth one today. So I've yeah. got lots of, uh, lots of energy to, to, to talk to everybody with. And you could probably speak on coffee just for, for the whole 30 <laughs> minutes here. But yeah, um, um, coffee's one of my favorites. Before we get into the sort of the, the nuts and bolts of this, uh, you know, to provide some background, um, how did you become a trainer? And uh, what, you know, with, uh, the second part of that is, what's the difference between a trainer and an instructor? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. Um, so I'll start with the second uh, question, the, at least in my perspective, the difference between a trainer and an instructor. So trainers typically cover lots of different courses and, and potentially lots of diff different disciplines. And there's a lot of work that goes into, if you're somebody who delivers training, memorizing the content, you know, going through and making sure that the value you're gonna deliver with respect to the courseware is, is really solid. And, and that's the, the, gonna be the same if you're a trainer versus an instructor. And, and in, in my opinion, an instructor is somebody that delivers training but does a lot of other things from an experience perspective that they roll back into their delivery of training. Uh, myself and, and everyone else that, that, that we've got um, at, at, at Process Mentors, but, but also lots of the other instructors that are within the Discipline Agile community, the majority of the work that they do is based on coaching or based on consulting where they're working with teams, working with organizations, so they have the practical experience that when a student or an attendee in a, in a workshop starts to ask questions based on their context, based on something that they're really challenged with, you know, they, they lay out a particular scenario. It's being able to go off of if there's speaker notes that are included in the courseware that the instructors are, are, are aided by. 
you can listen to what somebody's asking and based on, you know, typically multiple experiences at lots of different organizations working with lots of different teams, you can, you can understand what may or may not work and things that they might be able to experiment with or things that maybe have promise of, uh, you know, on paper or from an academic perspective working, but then you can again share, here's why that might not work based on, you know, the setup that you've got. So that to me is, is one of the differentiators um, in, in, you know, an instructor versus, versus a trainer. Um, I know myself, I, I do, um, you know, 30, 40% of my, my time is doing training and all the rest of my time is, is spent working with teams, working with, with organizations. And how, how I got into instructing, uh, I've, uh, I've been an instructor for, for well over two decades. Um, the vast majority of the instructing that I do is, is in this space, in the Agile space, and now specifically over the past uh, long stretch of time, just in the Discipline Agile space. Um, but, but I'm also a Pilates instructor, so I, uh, I'm a certified instructor um, on uh, some of the apparatus that, that we've got in the Pilates space. And I have a hobby where I, I race sports cars, and so I'm a, a driving instructor as well. So I've, I've actually trained hundreds and hundreds of people on how to learn getting onto a racetrack, driving your car on a racetrack, and, and enjoying that, and then moving up into actual racing. So I, uh, I balance a lot of my, my style of instruction based on all of these different venues that I've had the opportunity to, to instruct in. And also I'm able to uh, try and identify the different learning styles because not everybody learns the same. Yeah, so with that, um, race car driving and Pilates are fascinating, but uh, turning it back to DA for a minute, uh, what options do people um, have for, for, uh, for training and for different types of learning styles. You know, uh, DA, DA is all about choice. So uh, what are the options that people have? Yeah, so um, for those of you out there, you might not be aware, you, you actually have lots of different options when it comes to learning about Discipline Agile and in lots of different formats. The most prevalent and common approach is where you take a certification training course. Instructor-led, it's typically the, the lecture type of, uh, of format where we've got a set of courseware that we take you through, um, individual exercises or team-based exercises. Some of them are done in an activity workbook. Some of them will be done in a, a virtual collaboration platform. If we're doing it uh, virtual, like, like we've been doing for, for almost a year now, uh, as well as in-person uh, co-located type of training. But that's just one of the formats. So in addition to having virtual live or live in-person training, there's on-demand training, right? That's something that we've been doing more and more of. Uh, we've got uh, the first course was just released on LinkedIn Learning uh, called Introduction to Discipline Agile that came out um, last week, which has been very exciting. And we've been working on lots of on-demand courses uh, as a way to be able to make sure that there's an opportunity for people that learn from that style, that they can take it at whatever point in the day that it works for them. They can, they can use, you know, 20 minutes today and an hour tomorrow and, you know, some time on the weekend or whatever fits their schedule. So the on-demand training is typically done where they're very short little modules, right? Anywhere from maybe one to five minutes. So it's very easy to go through and rewatch and pick something back up. So on-demand is, is another style of learning. Um, we've got blended learning. So one of the things that we do for some of the larger organizational transformations that, that we support is we've done a number of on-demand trainings that are proprietary to a given organization. They bring that into their learning management system. Um, their employees and oftentimes contractors have access to that training material. And then we do a blended learning approach where we do hold office hours. So we give the opportunity to have a classroom style of learning, be able to answer questions, do some of the exercises, and then they go back and they can supplement that with you know, additional learning. Uh, PMI is getting ready, ready to release some of their e-learning. They've got some of the introdu introduction courses already for Discipline Agile, but they are getting ready to release one for the Discipline Agile Scrum Master designation. Um, the e-learning in comparison to on-demand or video-based learning. Um, the video-based learning is an instructor that's on camera. 
Um, typically, you're going to have some amount of you know graphics that come in, or it'll move back and forth between an instructor being recorded and some of the typical slide work that would come in. E-learning is typically where it's just an animated module, so it's going to be a voiceover with a lot of the you know the animated graphics that you would watch. Um, the last style of training is one that is just in time. So one of the things that we've we've done now for, for well over a decade is we, from a transformation perspective, we work with teams once they've chosen their way of working to then do that way of working. So if they've gone through based on their context and use the tactical scaling factors out of Discipline Agile, selected the best fit lifecycle, taken a look at the process goals, made decisions on the practices or techniques that are going to be the, the most applicable to, to their unique situation. Well, once they do that, they typically are going to need training for those practices as well as some coaching. So the just-in-time training format is where we work with teams and if they've never um, identified user stories before. So they're going to do that for the first time, learn how to write a user story, and then we're going to write the user stories in workshops for their particular scope of work. So just-in-time training is another option, typically anywhere from maybe 15 minutes if it's a small practice to maybe something that's 40, 45 minutes in length. I think 45 minutes is, is the longest one that, um, that we've got. Yeah. So, yeah, in-person, instructor-led, on-demand, um, e-learning, and then just-in-time are the ones that you know, are, are, are the, the, the primary options. Yeah, and hey, Joshua, uh, sort of a, a timely question here from Vivian. Um, where can she find some of these on-demand trainings that you talked about? Yeah, so um, the, the very best place that I'll say right now is to go to LinkedIn Learning, and if you just search Discipline Agile, you'll find Introduction to Discipline Agile. Um, I, and and um, I don't want it to sound like a shameless plug, but it is the first one on, on DA that is really from somebody with experience on DA. Um, I was the author of that one. And there's a suite of courses that are coming out that'll build um, more into the intermediate space um, and also getting into the agile that is used to deliver value in the non-software space. Um, we have on-demand courses that we are just putting um, the final uh, packaging on. Those you can find on our website, um, processmentors.com. And um, actually, we, we recently launched a, a, a brand new website, changed our, our branding. And so all of the options and, and more that I'm talking about, you can, you can find on our website as well. The e-learning is going to be available through um, PMI. So that's something that um, as soon as that gets released, we'll be doing a webinar on that and also be doing a, a fair amount of discussion on the, the content and how to, how to possibly use that in combination with, with some other learning techniques. That's all great stuff, Josh. Thanks for, for detailing that for everyone. You, you mentioned several choices of different training types and, and styles um, on demand, sort of blended one-on-one um, -on -one coaching. If I'm an individual looking to increase my skills, uh, what's the best place to get started? Yeah, so that so one of the things that um, happened at the beginning of last year, um, you know, which was the, the first really big change from a DA learning perspective um, after PMI um, acquired the Discipline Agile Consortium, was that they came out with a set of certifications and training workshops that supported that. Towards the end of last year, um, starting in October, there are certification courses with new certifications and a nice Agile journey map that PMI provides. So one of the ways is that you can look to the certification approach where you can go to the Discipline Agile Scrum Master training, two-day training course, and challenge an exam and potentially be certified. Um, based on your level of experience where you're trying to go, there's the Discipline Agile Senior Scrum Master, Discipline Agile Coach, and then finally the Discipline Agile Value Stream Consultant. So one venue that you can look to is going down the certification path. Um, another path, or maybe a, a, a merged path into that, is you can find additional training, both from a foundational perspective, as well as a boot camp style. So we've we've got a boot camp um, that is on agile and lean practices that specifically gets you into a lot of the common practices 
and um, the two prevalent life cycles for teams new to Agile, the Agile life cycle and the Lean life cycle. So going through a boot camp that immerses you in a portion that is learning. Again, we've taken a lot of our just-in-time learning modules. And then you go into sort of the lab environment and you're going to do an exercise based on trying to put that into practice so that when you get out of the boot camp, you're ready or potentially more well prepared if you're brand new to Agile to go through one of the certification courses, as well as be able to bring that back to your, you know, your organization, the team that you're on, or the customer that you're supporting, and, and have something that's that's really actionable. So boot camps, certification trainings are two of the very um, best steps to move forward, um, depending on, on where you're at in your career, your your in, in the agile journey that that you're on. Um, and one other thing that I will add in from a again a learning perspective is um, we have had a number of individuals that have gone through training. They work at a company that maybe has either um, adopted a, a prescriptive framework, so a particular approach, um, or they're still using a more traditional approach, but they're looking to learn agile, maybe you know, look to options they might have in moving their career along even at another organization. So we also do one-on-one -on -one mentoring. So just like what we would do from a coaching perspective when we're engaged with an organization, um, we do have mentoring options where we have a mentoring, uh, a mentoring action plan that we put together for individuals so that they not only learn in the, for the classroom environment or classroom environment, and, and if we're using a boot camp approach, um, you know, real exercises uh, that they're, they're learning from a practical perspective, but then they have the opportunity to, to be mentored by, by a really experienced coach. So that, that's, that's another option um, that most people don't know they, they actually have available. Yeah, that's great, Josh. Another question came in from Trey. Um, thank you for the information on uh, the individuals, uh, but my organization is looking to get started uh, with Agile. Uh, is, should we follow the individual path or where's the best place for us to start? Yeah, so um, from an organizational perspective, um, we have a, a transformation roadmap that, that we use with, with our customers. It's, it's actually based off of the roadmap that is an executive handbook to Discipline Agile that, that Mark Lines and Scott Ambler wrote. And uh, over years of working with, with Mark and Scott and um, using that roadmap, uh, we've, we've taken that and, and we've got some additional options within it. So one of the things that if you're at an organization, you're, you're uh, a member of the, uh, the PMO, you're, you're in a, a, a leadership perspective, we, we typically want you to understand the types of options that you've got and what might be best fit for you, both, both from a training and a coaching perspective. It's, it's all about enabling the teams to become learning teams, which helps the organization be you know, a learning organization to, to actually achieve business agility. And what we typically provide from an option standpoint is one you know, configuration of our roadmap focuses on foundational training that is the, uh, the, the certification path. So it's important um, when we have the opportunity to train all the team members together. So whether that is taking them through a multi-day um, certification workshop, um, that's one of the options that would then also still lead into our just-in-time training approach. Um, another option, depending on what's important to the organization and where they want to start, is to start with some basic foundational training. So we've got training options that span anywhere from two to eight hours. Um, and, and the reason why we have options is sometimes at organizations, you've got uh, some misconceptions about what an agile way of working is. Um, oftentimes, we find that Scrum is one of the starting places. Sometimes we find Scrum is being done quite well. Um, sometimes we find Scrum is, is not being done quite well. It's, it's that typical uh, Scrum fall or, you know, Wagile, the waterfall Agile. Yes, we have a product owner and we have a Scrum master and we do our daily Scrum, uh, daily standups, but they're really still doing a mostly waterfall approach. In that situation, we might need to do actually more foundational training because we have to kind of undo a little bit of the, the mindset that people are in or what they think is a really good Agile way of working 
and, and help them see that there are opportunities for improvement. So foundational training, again, whether it's uh, the certification training, it's just you know a, a certain quantity of training that's gonna set the foundation to build on. And then again, moving into more of the, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna select a way of working for each, or each team will select their way of working. And then we're gonna help train them um, going down that path. Um, and one other thing that I, before maybe we move, I see there's, there's other, other questions um, that are being asked, um, but I do wanna also say that it's not just team members or practitioners that need to be trained. And, and I think a lot of the message I've already tried to, to, to convey um, really does focus on people that are the doers of the work. But one of the, the critical aspects of companies getting real value out of investing in, in changing their way of working and specifically moving into a, an agile way of working is you know, everybody needs to have a certain level of training. And we strongly recommend, which, which again is tied to the, the roadmap that's, that's in the BA executive guide, leadership needs to be trained. And, and time and time again, we heard, you know, our leadership team, our C-level executives, you know, they're really busy. You can never get any of their time. Well, okay, they need to at least make the commitment, whether it's a 90-minute training or a couple of 90-minute trainings or a half day of training, um, that really gets their understanding of what we're trying to accomplish with an agile way of working. We need stakeholders trained. We need managers trained, you know, operational managers. We need other types of managers. We have project managers and program managers and product managers and all these other titled positions in organizations, but the training that they're going to need really needs to be suited for the type of work they're doing and where they're going to be providing the most value. So yes, almost anybody can get value out of going to, for instance, the, the you know, foundational certification training, the discipline agile scrum master training, but we, we do have lots of options and there's options available in the, in the marketplace to have very specific you know, outcomes for some of these different types of roles that are really important or important, important in my experience, at least. Great. That, another question, Josh, uh, came in from Sean uh, talking about the transformational roadmap. Um, what, what metrics did, should, you, should you use to develop the transformational roadmap and what does a good one look like? Um, Sean, that, that's a great question. Actually, uh, I did, one of the webinars we did last year with um, Rod Bray and Paul Sims was called What Does Good Look Like? And what we typically do when we're starting a transformation is we're going to do either if you're moving from a traditional approach, we'll just do an assessment of the type of work and get an understanding of the cultural aspects, which are so critical to, to really being able to make progress. If you're already doing an agile way of working, we'll do an agility health check. So we have slightly different things that we're looking for to be able to start to build the strategy and build the roadmap. What we do next is we, we do what good looks like. And we want to balance making sure that what we're measuring is focusing on um, being able to have transparency or visibility into, are we gonna deliver better value? Are we going to be working in smaller batches of work? Are, are we seeing that as we're, we're developing, you know, these really small requirement stories really early in the life cycle compared to a traditional approach, we're seeing engagement by stakeholders. We're seeing that through the product owner, that their feedback is being incorporated. They're finding things out so much earlier and able to feed that back into um, what the teams are, are actually working on in the direction that they're going. So we, we've got measures we look at from that perspective. We have measures that we take a look at in the mindset space itself. Um, actually, I, 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 Al Shalloway has been, been on these webinars and I've been working pretty closely with Al and he had asked me uh, just last week, like, what do I think the agile mindset is? And for me, it's when I see people moving away from the mindset of that's not my job to you know, I can step in and help with that, right? I, you know, I might be a developer by title and, and by the vast experience I have. But if I see that we've hit a work and process limit, we've, you know, we've got a, 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 a growing um, backlog of uh, stories in the, uh, that need to be tested, right? The testing activities, seeing somebody step in and actively pull that work is one of the ways that we want to see the mindset shift happening, right? So we have a number of things that we look for in the mindset space. 
And then finally, just, and, and again, th these are all like, so the, the, are we trending towards being able to deliver value better and uh, um, everything in those measures, that's, that's the majority. So if I had to put a percentage, that's 65, 70% of what we would want to be measuring and focusing on. Mindset, super important. Again, that might be anywhere from 20, 25%. And then we also do want to measure just how well the process is being used, that we're not just doing Agile in name only. You know, uh, transformations are expensive. Um, you know, training individuals, not only there's a cost of the training, there's a, there's a cost of them not being at their you know, workstation doing work. Um, there's a productivity dip whenever you're going to learn something new. And so we, we want to see that we're going to be more effective and efficient coming out the other side of it. It's the typical, typically referred to that J curve. So we do, at least early on, want to measure that, you know, we are seeing that the teams have chosen a way of working and that they're actually doing it. Um, so those, those are from a measurement perspective and, and all that being tied into training and, and coaching. Um, we look at, you know, you know, the first 30 days, we look at 31 to, to, to 90 days, so that next 60 day period. And then we have like sort of ongoing, we want to see experimentation is happening. Um, again, from a DA perspective, that, that whole guided continuous improvement, we might have started with a number of options we've selected, but based on the experience of the team and their results, we want to see that they're experimenting and trying to make their process better um, as frequent as possible. Yeah, Josh, I think we have time for one quick question. It's a follow on um, that Rosie asks. You mentioned um, measuring success there, and you also mentioned, you know, the different types of people who need to be involved from the executives to practitioners to managers. You know, how do you come up with those measurement criteria and then communicate it back to all those different constituents? Yeah, so this is um, for, for any of you that are out there that um, are at the experience level, you'll be looking to um, go through the Discipline Agile Value Stream Consultant Program. This is something that, that is definitely um, riddled all through that. And, and it's as a, as a consultant, as a, as a coach that's coming into an organization and taking a look at you know, training options and coaching options and, and how teams can be measured from the progress that they're making. We, we have a toolkit and, and other consultancies have, you know, their, their own types of toolkits that, that we use to do this with. We don't dictate the measures that we are going, that, that an organization is going to use. What we do is we provide context and we want to make sure that the organization is owning their measurement plan, right? So they, we don't own the transformation roadmap as an external consultancy that's helping an organization. The leadership of the organization, the management of the organization, the team members, right? Everyone from top to bottom has to own that transformation roadmap. And so from a selection of measures, from a selection of training options, those are all things that we, we provide counsel on. We provide context as far as what we feel might be um, a recommended option, but we're there to help facilitate the organization making those decisions. And again, that's, that's going to be from top to bottom. We, we don't want to see leadership or, you know, the ivory tower approach where somebody that is very far removed from the actual doing of the work is making all of the decisions. It's, it's decisions all the way on through. And then we see that there's collective ownership for the process that's being uh, instantiated and, and the ownership of how it's going to be measured and the results that are going to be achieved. Um, and everything that's tied into the strategy that, that the, the roadmap is, is producing. Great, thanks. I think that's, um, that's probably all we have time for in terms of questions. Um, yeah. Josh, you know, we have a couple more we can follow up with uh, when we're done here. Yeah, so I, I, yeah, I'd like to thank you. Again, this is a different format. I'm, you know, I'm sitting quite different than I normally do. Uh, different for me, actually, not hosting a webinar, but actually being, being the speaker. So I do appreciate everybody that is in attendance today. The questions that have been asked, um, and again, I see that, that there's definitely a lot more that uh, um, I will absolutely get uh, going on and, 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 and put a blog out on. Um, this webinar and this particular topic and, and what we're doing this month came from a lot of requests. So what I would also like to ask is if you've got something you're interested in, um, please send us an email. Um, let us know. We're, we're trying to provide these webinars as a, as a way to um, help support the community and bring lots of different topics that are timely and valuable. So if you have something 
that you would like to know more about, um, please just let us know and um, we'll figure out who might be an expert speaker for them and, uh, and how best we can, we can set that topic up. And I will share my screen one last time very quickly to uh, just talk. Well, you know what? Instead of sharing my screen, I'm going to do something different again today. Um, one of the, For our webinar next week, the topic is going to be the mindset for the Discipline Agile Scrum Master and the Discipline Agile Senior Scrum Master. Senior Scrum Master, or they're both new certifications. The Senior Scrum Master, um, we're seeing that courses are just being offered for towards the end of December and, and, and throughout January. So it's relatively new. We've got some really interesting data points from people that have been in our courses and, and we've collaborated with a lot of other instructors. So we're gonna talk about the, the mindset for those, those two particular certifications. Um, I also do want to say one of the uh, learning opportunities that everyone has is the All Things Discipline Agile Forum. It's just www.allthingsda.com. That's a community-based forum that you can ask questions, um, read through topics that are being posted. And then from a Discipline Agile certification perspective, um, we've got multiple courses that are coming up um, this month, next month, April. I think we're scheduled through right now through the end of April. DASM, DASSM. We've also got our Agile and Lean boot camps that we typically run that two day boot camp just prior to um, our Discipline Agile Scrum Master uh, courses. Uh, we've we found that that provides a lot of value for, um, for, for our attendees. And last thing I'll say is we, we, we have launched um, and rebranded um, a completely new website. Uh, a lot of the things that I've talked about, you can find additional information there. We've got a number of free eBooks and uh, lots of freely available information. It's processmentors.com. And with that, I'll say thank you again for joining us and I hope to see you next week. And um, I'll talk to you then. Goodbye.